Welcome to the Writer's Journey Podcast. I'm Michael Laron, a science fiction and fantasy author on a journey to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I pull back the curtain on my writing life and how I'm building a writing career while working a full-time job, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. You can find show notes for this week's episode, a free starter library of my fiction, and much more at michaellaron.com. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to episode 42. Now, this is going to be a longer episode, but this is going to be my report card episode. So this is definitely one that if you love my episodes, you'll want to stick until the end. and you'll, you'll see why. So this has been a productive year for me, and I managed to get a lot done. Some of you said in comments on my YouTube channel and on this podcast that you wanted to see some more insights um, of behind the scenes of me and how I run my writing business. So in this episode, I'll be sharing a quick report of what I accomplished this year. So this week, I'm talking about my year in review. I'm also sharing this content almost word for word on my YouTube channel, and I'm doing this because the timing of this video is right around the holidays, so I want to spend a little bit of extra time with my family and give myself an easy set of video and audio to do for the holiday week, so forgive me. Now, you guys know that I do a lot, family, work, law school classes, writing, nonprofit with the Alliance of Independent Authors, Um, and I want to show you that I'm not in fact splitting my focus, but that everything I'm doing is intentional. To give you some background on what my focuses are as an author, I have four main focuses in my writing business. Everything I do reinforces those focuses, and those are people, profit, expenses, and growth. People are the lifeblood of everything that I do. My strategy is to serve, listen to, and empower the people that enable my writing. I measure myself in terms of how valuable I am to other people, sometimes a blessing and a curse, but it's important to me. I value people. That includes my readers, my YouTube subscribers, podcast listeners, mailing list subscribers, people I meet at events, the people that work for me, etc. I love engaging with people, and it's one of the main reasons I make myself so accessible and respond to fans. Approximately one-fourth of all the time I spend is investing in people. That means talking to people, reviewing my videos to see what you guys respond to most, watching my audio statistics to see which episodes are the most listened to, which are the most which are the the least listened to, (laughs) and understanding more about the genres in which I write and what readers want so that I can deliver that to them and serve them not only what they want, but what they need. That means, how are people interacting with my website? How are they interacting with my books? What about my characters resonates with them? How are they finding me? How can I create clear choices for them so that they buy my books or listen to my podcast or click on the YouTube cards on my YouTube channel or take whatever action I want them to take? That's easier said than done. One of the things that I've, I've done to help and best in both readers and writers in a lasting way is serving with the Alliance of Independent Authors, Ally for short. Ally's mission is ethics and excellence in self-publishing, and their goal is to help authors put their best foot forward in the marketplace, which not only benefits them, but ultimately benefits readers. Ethics and excellence lines up with my own personal mission. So Ally is a strategic partner for me. Not only am I helping people through Ally, but but selfishly, it creates some connections and opportunities with movers and shakers that will be beneficial to me in my career. So the second focus in my writing business is expenses. So the goal here is to streamline my expenses and operations to increase efficiency, maximize profit, and spend money strategically so that I can grow. Now, that sounds very business-like and corporate, <laughs> but basically it's am I spending my money strategically or am I wasting it? Am I as efficient as I can be given my lack of time and resources? For example, I realized earlier this year that editing my own videos was too expensive for me to continue. As a result, I've outsourced that, freeing up more time for me to create. But it took some strategic planning before I was able to get to that point. Another example, I had a hard drive failure earlier this year, but I lost almost no data because of smart planning two years ago to invest in several backup methods. So another important element of any business is minimizing risk, and so that's something I'm always reviewing on a regular basis. For example, I do safety drills to test some of the controls that I have in place. What would I do if I lost my hard drive, if my computer got stolen, if my house burnt down, if I lost my job? (laughs) I'm always planning for things like this, almost to the point of paranoia, but more on that later. Being strategic with my expenses and minimizing risk is one of the major reasons I'm going to law school, too. I don't want to be a lawyer, but I do want to know how to think like one. Plus, my employer is paying for it. 
My ultimate goal here is to be efficient, quick, and create high quality products in as little time as possible because that serves my fans. That way, when I go full time with my writing, I can slide into it and focus on creating content and consuming more content even faster than I am now. After all, if I can be super efficient part time, then there's no stopping me if and when I go full time. The third focus is profit. Put simply, how much money am I making and how can I make more money? That means calculating royalties, monitoring my sales for trends that I can jump on, and figuring out whether my marketing is working. The fourth focus is growth. This is where the writing comes in, right? So the goal here is to create new products, books, videos, podcasts, courses, whatever, maximizing the exposure for my existing products that I've already created, and then bringing new people into my gravitational field. That begins with books that readers love. It means videos that my YouTube subscribers enjoy. It's about writing, writing well, writing fast, and writing sustainably while also taking care of myself. And it's about expanding my reach, either through organic search, podcast interviews, professional speaking, whatever makes sense for me at the time. So those are the four focuses of my business, people, profit, expenses, and growth. Believe it or not, that mirrors my family's plans. My wife and I are always investing in other people in our personal lives, spending time with them and building relationships. Family is first. Expenses are key to our family and we've minimized them in part to help pay for the way of, for my writing career and also to prepare for the risk of a layoff or job loss. Growth for us is spiritual. So all the areas of my life work together in a really great harmony. I don't believe in work-life balance, but I do believe in harmony and all the areas of my life complementing each other and blending together in unique and unusual ways. I also try to do the best job I can of taking care of myself. Combine that with eternal optimism on my part, and I truly believe that I can weather any storm. So I'll give you a rundown of what's happened for me this year. I wrote 350,000 words this year, slightly less than 420,000 that I wrote last year. I published six books this year, down from 12 last year, but last year was kind of crazy. Um, but that's, I think that's a temporary decrease. Next year in 2019, it should be better. I finished an eight month long journey to rebrand all my fiction covers, giving them a unified brand to reduce reader confusion when they see my books. That was an expensive project, but a necessary one. I published my last Dragonlord series in audio this year, and it's one of my best audiobook series available. I also ventured into audiobooks with my nonfiction writing books, which honestly are the most profitable investments I've made to this point. I also began using Publish Drive, getting all of my books into even more markets than before. I did around 20 podcast interviews, and I've got, I think, two or three booked for the new year. I launched the Writer's Journey podcast this year in March as a way to create some engagement with my readers, and I did about 40 episodes so far this year, not missing a single week. <laughs> I relaunched Author Level Up, and I think I published around 60 videos, not missing a single week. And when I returned, I had about 4,500 subscribers, and now I currently have around 7,500 7, subscribers, and I think I'll end the year pretty close to 8,000, which is almost double what I had when I started off. So the channel is growing at a rate of 15 to 20% every single month, and I'm gonna consistently be seeing more than 1,000 subscribers a month. <laughs> a year from now, my subscriber count is gonna look much different if I keep doing what I'm doing. The Writer's Journey podcast is about, I think it's getting about 500 downloads a month, which I'm super happy with, and um, I have some plans to grow this podcast next year as well. Every minute of every day, someone is watching one of my YouTube videos, which is just crazy to think about. And my channel surpassed over 1 million minutes watched earlier this year. I took over the Ask Ally member Q&A podcast for Ally. That's a monthly show, and I did about 10 to 11 episodes for that, so that was for most of the year. And I spoke at two conferences, one in Cincinnati and one in Las Vegas, in many ways launching a professional speaking career and another stream of income long term. So yeah, that's what I've accomplished this year. And honestly, it's not even all of it, but I did it with relatively little stress. This year wasn't all about success, though. I did have some... I guess you would call them major setbacks. So in November of this year, I had the best and worst week of my life, and it happened to me in the same week. I spoke at the 20 Books Vegas Conference, and I did a speech on part-time writing that really resonated with the audience. I was humbled, and it was a great time that definitely opened some doors in my career, like immediately. <laughs> some really cool things happened at the conference that I can't share quite yet. But anyway, when I got home, I discovered that my mom was dealing with some serious health issues that required me to step up and help her. Then the very next day after I learned that, my employer announced layoffs and that I may not have a job very soon. Combine that with the fact that my wife works at the same place <laughs> and our lives changed overnight. Literally, I mean, 
everything potentially for me is in jeopardy right now, and I don't say that lightly. So I'm still dealing with the fallout of this stuff, and you know I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what? I'll be okay. I've always landed on my feet in the past in hard times, mostly because I don't give up. But when this happened, I also followed my own advice. So I talk all the time about sometimes it's okay to, to take time off and just handle the problems that you need to handle. Well, I took an entire, I think it was a week or two off, off of writing to pick myself up, get my bearings, and figure out what I was going to do. And it seemed like no matter what I did for the rest of that week, I just couldn't seem to figure it out. But you know what I ultimately came to? I ultimately came to the fact that you can't plan for life to happen to you, but you can plan on how you respond. And it's, it's one of the main reasons that I prepare so extensively for the unexpected. I can't control what happens to me, but I can control myself. I can control my actions, my attitude, and my response, and that's enough. So while I ask for your guys' patience if I miss a, a podcast here and there in the short term or if I write fewer words than normal, I'm also going to pick myself back up publicly too. I can't promise it'll be perfect, but I suspect that you guys don't listen to this podcast for perfection. Everything in life is a season, and this too will pass. And if it doesn't, I'll figure it out. Anyway, that was how my year ended. I don't believe in ending things on a bad note because I'm still writing and working on projects. It hasn't really affected my writing output too much at this point, and the videos will keep coming as scheduled. In fact, I want to talk next about um, my most audacious project yet. <laughs> and it's one that you guys don't want to miss. So I share all of this so you guys can see that I'm not perfect and that I have my own battles to fight, and I know you do too, and maybe seeing what I'm going through will inspire you to be better than you thought you could and, and work harder. So, so this is why I wanted you to keep listening. So I'm starting a new project that is either going to be really awesome or it's going to be miserable and end in a huge embarrassment for me. <laughs> so I wanted to share this project with you all so that you can be a part of it. So here, here's the backstory. I was at a writer's conference in Las Vegas called 20 Books Vegas, and I met some amazing and extremely successful authors. And one author in particular really got me thinking about how I write and how I market my work. And it got me thinking, what if I do things differently? My fiction doesn't make as much money as I would like it to, and I want to change that this year. I don't, I don't want to be one of those one of those authors in the publishing community that has written a few books but then makes all their money with courses and, and things like that. That's just not how it's just not not how I want to do it. So I want to be a successful fiction writer that also happens to be doing other things. And so that got me thinking, what if I did things differently? So I started brainstorming just based on some of the conversations that I had with some of these successful authors, and I came up with an idea that's either going to work insanely well or it's going to fail miserably. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit to the urban fantasy genre. It will be my primary genre moving forward, at least in the short term. But I'll also be launching a new pen name and starting from scratch to see what I can learn about being a brand new author in 2019. I'll be reading exclusively in the genre, and I'll be studying the bestsellers to see if I can learn how to write urban fantasy well. Does that mean I'll write urban fantasy forever? No. I'll still publish things under the Michael Laron pen name, so I don't want my sci-fi fans to worry. But my hope is that by doing this project, I can learn more about marketing all of my titles, which will help me improve my sales. Now, the next component to this project is the one that's going to be a little gutsy and is what I'm referring to about this being cool or failing miserably. <laughs> so I'm going to write this novel in public. I'm creating a Facebook group for this new pen name, and in that group, I'll be posting the novel chapter by chapter as I write it, and I'll be taking comments from my readers on each chapter, so my readers will be able to help me write the novel that they want. This way, I can create a series that they'll love, and my hope is that the book will do well in the marketplace. There are more moving parts to this that I'm sharing with my YouTube audience, but assuming that you read my books, <laughs> all you need to know is that one, I'm committing to urban fantasy moving forward, and two, you can follow along. So here's how you can follow along. Check the podcast show notes for a link to my Facebook group, and there you can join it. The name of the pen name is called ML McKnight. Starting on, I think, December 28th, I'll be, I'll, I'm going to be posting chapters, and then we can take it from there. So I'll post that first chapter. I'll post a couple of chapters a week as I write them, and then you can kind of comment, and you can actually read the novel as I write it and see this whole project kind of come into play. So the, the kicker of this project is that I just came up with the pen name. Um, I think I, I had a couple of alpha readers, like very early, early on readers, read the first 10% of the book just to prove that it was viable. 
So they kind of signed off on it. And so here I am at the first 10%. I have no idea what I'm going to write next. So I talk all the time on my YouTube channel about how I don't outline my novels. I just kind of make things up as I go. Um, you will actually see the process of me doing this. Um, and then I'm I'm actually not just making things up as I go. I'm actually taking very detailed notes and, and all of that. But um, if, if you're interested in the inner workings of, of how I work or how a writer works and you want to be able to see that up front so that one day you might want to write a novel of your own or um, you just, you're just into that sort of thing, then be sure to check me out. Um, so check the show notes for a link to the Facebook group and you can join it right away. And then um, on the top of the group, there's a pinned post where you can read those first three chapters. And then I'll post chapters every week. And then um, if you want to sign up for the mailing list for this new pen name, I'm going to have a separate mailing list for that. It's going to be solely for urban fantasy readers. And that's at mlmcknight.com. That's M-L-M-C-K-N-I-G-H-T. Dot com. So I hope you'll join me on this crazy new journey, and I will definitely share the results of this project here on The Writer's Journey. So I hope that you have a safe new year, and I'll see you in the next year. Thanks for joining me this week. If you like this episode, you'll enjoy my backlist episodes at michaelleron.com slash podcast. For your free starter library of my favorite novels, join my fan club by visiting michaelleron.com slash fan club. If you're a writer and you want to connect with me further, check out my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, for helpful writing advice at authorlevelup.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next week.